Hey there, Board Game Maniacs, and thanks for joining us for another Super Saturday. Thought we'd change it up a little bit, and instead of playing the game, we're actually going to be painting a superhero. This is Cyclops, and this is from Atomic Mass Games Marvel Crisis Protocol. I'm sure you heard of it. It's on our channel because I play it a lot because I like it a lot. So learn the game. But, you know, for the most part, I got a, a pretty good understanding. So, again, just to give a little bit of variety, we are going to be just painting up Cyclops here. Rawr! What we did here, just before we start painting, is... We assembled Cyclops, or Brady assembled Cyclops, I should say. I could put some green stuff here, or that there could be just part of this uniform. Anyhow, I'm fine with it. I'm just going to go ahead like it is. And I just used the cheapest rattle can spray paint I could find to, to pretty much base him so that when I put the paint on, it's going to have something to stick to. And because I'm going to mostly concentrate on, on uh, using contrast paints today, that is with a, a light undercoat, like white, specifically when you put the contrast paints on, it's going to come out with a really nice color and you can build upon layers as we are going to go. He's, I'm assuming he's gonna be a pretty easy paint job because it's mostly like uh, blue and yellow, I think it is for him. So we'll just check onto that and let's start painting, shall we? Before we get started here, I just wanna let everybody know I am a little under the weather because I'm just getting over a head cold that I have. It's I'm just at the tail end of it, so I'm a little stuffy. You can hear some creaks or groans out of me, and I'm just letting you know ahead of time. It's just because I have a head cold, I'm getting over. All right. So having said that, we're going to be painting him. I'm trying a new uh, camera angle than what I usually have set up because I've been noticing my head has been getting in the way a lot in the videos and it just has been driving me crazy to be honest because I get a big noggin and it just gets in the way. So we changed the camera angle up a little bit so you can see a better shot of him I think but a lot of times when I'm painting like I go all around but if you're looking the way this I'm seeing this head on like this way here is where my eyesight is going but for you to see it head on it's just turning it like that so just be aware that I may be painting it like this and like that, and like this, and like that, and you know, well, anyhow, yeah. And I'm just using a spray can, a rattle can, spray cover to hold him with some blue sticky tack. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint his flesh. For mostly contrast paints that we're going to be using for this, the flesh color that I chose for Cyclops is Gilliman Flesh. It is a contrast color by Citadel. I like these contrast paints because I just... I find that they go on very well and it makes my crappy painting look not so crappy, I guess you could say. So just be aware of that, that that's what color we're using. So I'm going to try not to get my big noggin into the way there. So hopefully my big noggin is not in the way. So we're going to paint. So there's only a little bit of flesh because I got Brady to put the head on where he has the cap and everything. It just, I see so many of them out there with they're using him with the hair. He looks really cool both ways, but I remember in the comic books, I thought that his look was very, I don't know, distinctive, I guess. He, he looked a little more scary when he was wearing his his head, or his uh, headpiece, not his head. It's gonna wear his head all the time. What am I talking about? His headpiece, yes. So yeah, just uh, that's what I thought. And you can see here, that's the, the Gilman Flesh that's on. I really like the Gilman Flesh for the skin tone. And all I'm doing now is I'm just cleaning off my brush a little bit. But there's a little bit more paint onto it. I'm just going to go kind of around the edge. Just to kind of deposit a little bit more shadow on it and underneath his mask. But you got to be quick with this because, again, with the contrast paint, once it starts setting, then it's setting and you start pulling all of the paint off it. I don't want that. So again, I'm just going over, just give it a little bit of that darkness like that. And I'm not too sad about that. I think he looks okay, but that's gonna, the darkness is definitely gonna drive. So once he's dry, we'll be back and start painting his body. 
Now that his flesh is dry, we're gonna go with the yellow. Usually when I approach painting miniatures with contrast paint, I always go with the lightest color first and I work my way to the darkest. And my reasoning behind that, because the dark color will hide your mistakes that maybe you went over with the light color in most circumstances, but then there are gonna be other circumstances that that is not gonna work. Unfortunately, this is one of them circumstances because I'm painting with a very vibrant blue, but his straps and his visor and gloves and boots are going to be a yellow. So the yellow and blue, when the yellow lays over the, or when the blue lays over the yellow that's dry, what's going to happen is you're going to see some of that uh, separation to it. So you're going to have that distinctive line break between the two colors. This is what I'm, I'm guessing here from going from experience to what I for my painted before. And if I painted the blue on first and it did the yellow, if I make any messy mistakes with the blue, it's gonna come up over it. So again, it's half a dozen of one, six of the other, as they say <laughs> in some places. Anyhow, so we are doing Iander Yellow Contrast. I really like the color of this yellow. I don't want it to be like uh, super, super bright yellow. I'm gonna make it kind of look a little dirty because they're battling in cities and that. So they're going to get dirty themselves. So that's what we're going to do is we're just going to paint the Iander yellow. Here we go with the I Iander yellow. And if anybody's wondering, the brush that I'm... Hey, get that in camera frame. The brush that I'm using here, my wife actually bought me a new set of brushes. And this is uh, two, I'm assuming. And you can see the name of it right there. Maybe. Anybody want to look them up? It's a whole set she got me. They're very comfortable, so you know I don't mind painting with them at all. So hopefully, if anybody else wants to get some brushes that I think are pretty cool, I'm not a pro or anything, but I just like the feel of them. So again, straps, you name it, we have to paint it onto him. Okay, here goes nothing. And usually I wouldn't be worried too much about going you know, making it a little bit sloppy because of the darker paint's gonna cover it. Because, but, because, I can't even talk today. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that if it's loud. Uh, what I, uh, what, what I said before about with that contrast blue, which I'm gonna show you that we're going to use, it's going to show that separation and I don't want that. So we're gonna have to just be very, very careful with this because I don't want to screw it up that bad because I really like Cyclops. He's a pretty cool character. Never played him yet, but I am hoping to put him on the table soon because he is painted. I got the Storm too as well, but Brady's like, Dad, can I paint her? Please, 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 because he really likes Storm for some reason. And I don't blame him because she is a pretty cool lady. She, he's going to paint that, not on camera though, I asked him to, he's like, no, I'm not doing that. So he's just going to paint, but I'll show everybody, like I'll be posting on our Facebook page and Instagram page and so on and so on. Uh, i got to try to stay in camera here. So yeah, we'll be uh, posting pictures on our Facebook page and that of all of our painted stuff. Just like another game that I just picked up and I, I, had, I have projects that I have to do. And this project kind of took over any other projects. And that is the alien. So you can see where I made a mess here already. Uh, got to try to clean that up, whether we have to paint more white over that or not. But we'll figure that out. Um, what I was saying is, um, oh yeah, picked up it's, uh, aliens, another glorious day in the core. And oh boy, I just had to paint them right away. So I painted the game, the miniatures from the core game. I don't got anything else for them yet but I did order I did make some orders and you're going to be expecting to see some of that gameplay on the channel for sure because it's just it's awesome like I already played it because I played it with my buddy Tim he owns Max Aggression Bunker Max Aggression Gaming Bunker here in Welland Ontario Canada and he he him and I we played it and it's just, it's an awesome game. I already found some files that I'm going to be purchasing and printing 
for the 3D printer just to add more things to it because it just I can go on and 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 on more about it, but I won't. This is all about painting Cyclops here. It's not about painting or talking about alien another glorious thing the core. Well not yet anyhow, but it will. So you can see here with the contrast, it's well, I find it's always important to keep your your brush wet especially with contrast because if it starts drying out you're going to start pulling color off and I find it's really hard to replace it when you start pulling the color off and it just it takes more coats more coats more time more paint and everything else you know that, that sort of fun stuff um so I'm just going to keep painting here I usually cut this but we're just going to keep this one rolling a bit just to see my my funny mistakes that I do. Ah, oh, people thought I was going to swear. No. And I don't care about getting it onto this hair because I'm going to be using regular paint on the base. The base. Yeah, we're going to be using regular paint on that when we get to it. But yeah, you know. So when I do the contrast paints too as well, like I'll put the first coat on. I won't play with it afterwards. I'll just leave it till it's dry. And then after it's dry, if it needs any other places, like if the uh, miniature soaked up I'll go in and fix it up or sometimes too as well I'll go in with the second coat only in certain areas with the same contrast paint and that way it just it darkens it and it helps with the shadows for the recessing of the shadows and so forth so anyhow I'm not gonna bore everybody by painting like this because I'm sure you're, you don't want to hear me rambling on about all these different things but when I finish all of the yellow we'll be back I'll show you what I did I'll talk more about what I did and I'm just going to ramble more and more and more so we'll be back, back, back. I think we're at a good stage with the Iander Yellow I think it's called, the contrast paint. And you can see there what I did is after it dried I went in and I just had a little bit more yellow to make it, make it darker in the spots for like the pooling like you can see here for his belt and everything. His feet are darker in some things. Like the natural pulling, I just add a little bit more to it to create more of a natural kind of shadow. And you can see here, it's really weird. His uh, his visor looks like it's red on the inside, but that's only the yellow where it's settled. And also, I darkened in his pouch just a little bit on the bottom. You can see right there, so that, that's pretty much it for the yellow. Oh, by the way, I left uh, this part out because I'm going to paint it like there's metal onto it. And you can see right there too as well on that side, the X is going to be painted black and white. Or not black and white, black and red. And the same with on the front too as well on his chest. So the next thing we're going to do now is we are going to add the gray to his belt buckle. And I'm thinking that's it for the for the gray that we're going to... Actually no, we're going to put it on his, uh, his wrist too as well. And I'll show you what contrast paint we're doing in a second. We're going to be using Balsinicum Gray. I always have problems saying that, but that's what we're doing. And we only need a little, little tiny bit for this because we're only doing his belt buckle for the gray. And that is it. But I just want to, again, stress the importance of with your contrast paint or any paint of that matter, you have to really shake it good before you start using it. Because if you don't, you're going to have some issues. So yeah, we're going to do the, the gray on the belt buckle. Again, you can see there he's got like the X. So we're just going to do this. Right. And we want to be careful to avoid the yellow as much as possible because this will kind of contaminate it a bit, make it a little on the, the dirty side. Okay, just got to carefully go through. Just like so. Doo -doo -doo -doo. All right, I hope I'm on camera. For, ah, I'm on camera, perfect. All right, so now what we're going to do is just leave this dry and we're gonna go and we're going to tackle all the blue. Actually, before the blue, we're gonna do the red first because, just, just cause, you know, why? Why not? So let's do the red next. Before we jump onto the blue, I made an executive decision off camera and I used the same gray that I painted his buckle with just to paint like the, the little stuff, like the straps onto his legs and 
you know, onto the, his upper legs as well. And also where his hands are, you can see there. So just so we're on the same page moving forward, I know I did it off camera, but I was painting, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I, I think they should have like that kind of color. That looks cool. So yeah, that's where we're at. I'm kind of tempted to leave them white and then just do a wash because I like the look of them like this. I don't know about you, but I think it looks pretty cool like that. But anyhow, we're going to start now on to doing the blue. When I say blue, I mean the red, which we're going to do first. For the red beam on his visor, I'm just going to be using some contrast blood angel red. Shaken up very, very good. Not stirred. It's going to be shaken. So I'm just going to put that over there. And again, just a little tiny bit of red. What we could do really is we could go in and we could put the paint the red too as well on the X symbol on this chest and on his back. So I'm thinking that's what we're going to do. And before we get on with that, just to uh, let everybody know, I noticed there was a little bit of a I drip each back here. I could, you couldn't really see it, but I noticed it, so I cleaned it up with the, the white paint. Just some white paint, any white paint. And that's what I did just to help clean it up a little bit. So now we're going to do the red, all of the red. So let's get to it. Let's get cracking. I mean, painting. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so this is going to be a little tricky. I don't want to mess him up. Yeah, it'd be better if he was on camera. Yeah, all right. Whoops, that was very close. Did I touch him? Yeah, I did. Darn it. Okay. Oh, little red dot there. I'll fix it up later with the yellow. So. So I just rub it off with my finger slightly and oh yeah I gotta fix it. it looks like he's bleeding from the eyes oh that's kind of cool you could have gotten a big fight or something but anyhow I'll I'll fix that up later so let's do try to do this X now it's very tiny but we're gonna try to do it I got a smaller brush that I can use to just to dab it but I don't like you switching brushes all the time I'm weird so yeah, just a little tiny dab. Just like that. Just like that. And there we go. Let's turn it around here. And we're gonna do the same thing. And with them sound effects, of course, because you gotta, when you paint, I don't know about everybody else, but I make sound effects. Sometimes when I'm painting off most times, but when I'm on camera I try not to, but they do tend to slip out a little bit. So let's try it again. And if I mess this up, it's okay, because black is going over top, so it's going to be able to fix up some of the mistakes, like that huge mistake that I made. Ugh. That's okay. Because I'll fix it with the black. Oh yeah! All right, so now we are going on to the blue. Really, we are. Finally on to the blue step. And we are going to be using Talisar Blue. It's a very vibrant blue. I really, really like how bright this is. But obviously, we're going to put a little bit of wash onto the miniature. So it's going to tone it down a bit and work from there. So the way that I start painting, if it's a large area, you know, I'll get my brush a good amount of product onto it but then I'll start painting wherever it's going to where it's the darkest and then I start just pushing the paint outward so like right here is that on camera there we go keep it on camera come on so yeah I'll just start working my way around here onto his buttocks Pulling it out, pulling downward, pulling outward, upward, don't matter, but I'm just, I put the pull there and then I'm just pulling away, just like that. Sometimes too as well, especially with this, uh, this type of blue, oops, don't get on the yellow, it's, it'll take like maybe two coats to make it look 
somewhat even. Even Steven. And I don't want to bore everybody with just hear me painting and you know all that sort of stuff but I'll just keep painting a little bit anyhow just so that you can see and then after that I will stop it do a little bit of movie magic by pausing the video and coming back when I paint it all now I, I do have to let everybody in on a little secret of mine and that is, I do pausing in the videos. I'm not painting it straight like all the one color for a couple of reasons. Obviously, it sort of don't take as long because I don't want the videos to paint with the Maniac series for like, you know, Starbound Saturday or Super Saturday in this case to be like really, really long for me painting it. But also too as well, the, the main reason though is because honestly, whoop, there we go, I am blind as a bat not really but I have really bad close-up vision so because of that I have to wear and thanks to getting old I'm wearing like a jewelry painter mask if that makes sense the big magnifier that's hooked onto my head and sometimes I have to get in really really close to see it but if I get in too big like I'll just reach my head and you can see the jewelry mask coming down like that and because of that it just my big dog will be blocking every shot and I don't want that so that's why I'm doing it where I pause it I paint more of it and then I come back so that's what we're gonna do here too is so I'm just gonna pause and paint all of the blue and we'll be back to see what it looks like after the first coat not the two coats not that I'm not gonna come back when it's completely finished but after I'm done with the first coat if I think it's great then we'll be done but let's just continue on with the paint. painting painting this is the first coat of the blue that is dry. Now you can see it's really picking up on the details. And you know, I'd be happy with leaving it like this, but I do find it's a little bit splotchy in parts. I don't mind the splotchiness too much, because it kind of shows that his, you know, he's maybe he's been in the fight a little bit longer and you know his it, it's just you know it's dirty and everything else. But what we're going to do now. I'm going to do it off camera. I'm just going to let you know that I already told you about this. Before we go ahead and paint the, uh, the X-Men symbol, we're going to just take the same blue and we are going to go in all the shadows, just darken it up in some spots. And when that's done, I'll be back and I'll show you the difference. So take a good look at this. And when I come back, we'll see how much of a difference this is going to be. And again, I'm not adding any other additives for like the... Um, you know a little bit of black into it a little bit of white or so on this is just straight out of the pot with the color it is the uh talisar blue the contrast paint by citadel and when i'm done with that i'll be back and i'll show you exactly the difference i hope and there you have cyclops where with the second coat of the blue onto him and you can see on uh, with the second coat all i went and did is i didn't do it in totally like put it all over I just put it in selective sh spots where the shadows were and where the lines are and you can see it kind of starts giving that uh, more three-dimensional look so I'm kind of happy with this so far and we're just gonna continue on with the next step because I think for now he's he's finished for him like uh, painting the miniature but now we got to worry about the base and the first thing we're gonna do with the base is we are going to actually Oh, actually, we're not even done with the miniature yet. What am I saying? We got to paint black here and on the side. So let's do that first, shall we? Because I was all ready to tackle the base. For the black, we're going to be using Contrast Black Templar. I use this a lot, just like Lead Belcher in a lot of the paint jobs I do. I just so much Lead Belcher. Anyhow, so let's get to it and let's just do a little bit of black. And then we can continue on with that. So let's try to bring him in camera and then focus because you know what? That would be nice if we do that. So again, yep, just uh, try not to go over the red. If we go over the red, then we go over the red.
Still on. Yeah, I'm still on camera. Okay. Very quiet. I don't want to totally screw it up, but by the looks of it, I kind of screwed it up a little bit. Just saying. I'm okay with that. That's, you know, like that's passable. So let's spin them around and get the back one done because, you know, where there's one, there's another. x men symbol. Oh. Okay, so yeah, same with this. This is going to be interesting. I can't do that. I gotta try to paint this the best that I can here. I might have to pause the video and go in like super close because I'm blind. I'm close. Let's see, I'm going to try to do this while on camera. So far, I'm crossing my toes, my fingers, because I think it's working pretty good. Whoa, I hit it and almost bumped it. That would suck. Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. Gotta get it in camera. There you go. Like, What's wrong with you? When I say wrong with you, I mean me. I'm talking to myself here, so yeah, it's okay. But user, whoever's watching this, if anybody is watching this, is listening to me kind of go on and, and do kind of a, a ranty thing, I guess. There. Whew. Alrighty. So that's, that's the, the black, and then what we're going to do is we're going to start concentrating on doing the base next. And we're going to go from there. What we're going to do now is we are going to paint this thing here that's underneath. Me. I think it's a motor. I'm not 100% sure. But I'm just going to paint it metal anyhow. And we're just going to do that. And my favorite metal color, Light Belcher. Ooh I'm doing it. We're straight at the pot for this. I'm not going to do like uh, in my mixing palette or anything that, you know, water it down. I'm just going to go go all or nothing in this. It, if is my lead belcher out into this? What? Come on, I got lots of lead belcher. Oh no, I think I got some now. And I'm using a bigger brush for this. I did switch because I want to get it done quicker. It's a size eight if anybody's wondering. And you can see the name of it still. I think it's that way. No it's that way. Anyhow, let's go on with this. So this could be rock for all I know. I'm, I'm not 100% sure what it is, but I'm just going with the belcher to paint this perch. Get it done. Try to get it in. Oh, I'm so sniffy still. If only you you could hear me when I turn the camera off for barking and. No, I don't have uh, COVID that's going around. I have a head cold, I know that. But still, eh, this week's been pretty quiet for, you know, playing games because I just wasn't feeling it. But now, I'm getting better. I'm feeling a lot better. And I'm feeling it. Again, so we're just going to paint Cyclops because he's been sitting in my cabinet for a while. He's like, paint me, paint me, paint me. I'm gonna blast you. And, you know, and once he says he's gonna blast me, I'm like, yeah, that's that's what I gotta do. I gotta, you know, like uh, paint him because I don't want to get blasted with his uh, Cyclops vision. No, thanks. And I'm going on the base with the lead belchers, okay? Because I'm gonna be covering it up again. With a different color Ooh, the base that is so again same with this i'm kind of like doing dry brushing onto the grate but it, it's hmm, heavy dry brushing i guess is the way you could say it but i'm doing it just like this all right i'm gonna let that light belcher dry we'll be back to paint the next part of the base it's all with the base baby the lead belcher is dry. Now what I'm going to do with this, I did it before and I really like the way it looks. 
So I'm going to take my contrast basilicum gray and I'm just going to put it all over top of where I put the lead belcher. So let's do that, shall we? Whoa. So the basilicum gray, I'm just slathering it on, slather, 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 just like so, we still on camera, yes, this is great, and same with this, I, oh, see I'm not on camera anymore, jeez, there we is, okay, so, now, I'm just, again with the bas basilicum gray, I'm just going over where again, where I put the lead belcher, and you can see there, it kind of gives it the dirty look, but it also has the metal shine to it or sheen underneath. So we're going to leave this dry and we're going to paint the rest of the asphalt, or not the rest, but we're going to paint the asphalt next. The next thing we're going to do is paint the base. And we're going to paint it with Don Song. It's another Citadel color, but this is not contrast paint. This is actually like a, it's a layer paint. And this ain't going to take long to do. Just paint it pretty quickly here. And this is straight at the pot as well. I'm not uh, watering it down in any way because I'm going to put, we're going to put a wash on this too as well when we're finished. And on the miniature, two different washes, one on the miniature and then one on the base. But you'll see all of that shortly. And while I'm painting here, just a couple of questions I have for everybody watching is, uh, what do you think of the new camera angle? Did, do you like it better? Do you, are you able to see more? Would you prefer the old camera angle? Or if you have any other ideas for camera angles, I am all ears. Because, hey, the, the more you can see, the more the better off it is. The better off for me when, I can watch, when I'm watching painting videos and, you know, I can see a lot more. We're going to avoid painting over the metal parts. So just be aware of that. And we're going to paint the rim on this black. But before we paint the rim on a black, I'm just kind of messily slopping it over just like this. So you don't really have to see me what doing this. Once this is all dry, we're going to come back with the window washes. While the base is drying, just a quick note, it is splotchy, but I like doing it this way, especially for the asphalt. I'm just going over with, you know, I, I took some paint off of my brush, but not too much that's going to be lifting everything up. Just in spots where you can see the white going through it. And the reason why I'm doing this is when I do the black wash onto it, it's going to come up with that appearance of, like, Asphalt looks like where it has some black spots here and there and because it's not just a solid gray color asphalt for sure So yeah, I'm just going around. I'm just dabbing it. I just wanted to show everybody that I'm doing this In case everybody is wondering because I like this effect and the way it looks So we'll leave this go leave it dry. We'll be back like I said and we'll throw the wash on it We're ready to do the wash but again, like I said before, we're doing two different types of wash. We're going to do known oil straight at the pot onto the base. But for the miniature itself, I found a way that, uh, I, that I really like for the shadow and the gradation it gives onto the miniature. Because as everybody knows who have been watching this channel ever since they started doing painting with the Maniac, I like miniatures to look like they've been in a battle that they're dirty and everything else that they're not all nice and clean and pristine so because of that we're going to mix up uh ratio of one 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 is going to be agrax earth shade you can see right there so i'm going to do like 10 drops of agrax agrax earth shade and 10 drops of water in here and then i'm going to mix it around and we're going to apply it to him so i'm going to mix it and i'll be back so remember because it's one miniature, I'm only do, it, it's always one to one ratio, so 10 drops. If I do 20 drops of Agrax Earth Shade, it will be 20 drops of water. So just remember, it's one to one mixture. You can put whatever you want, and that may, makes it dirty looking. It, it kind of, don't make them filthy looking, but a little dirty. It increases the, the contrast and the shadows, and it'll smooth out if there's any blobs. Like with the blue, like you can see, I like the separation because I painted the the shade on it a little bit more when I say shade I mean I paint, painted an extra layer of blue onto where I want it to be darker so it'll just help balance it out more so after I mix it I'll be back and we'll throw it on 
I just had to shake it up off camera. That's why I kind of did it off camera. But you can see 10 drops I grabbed through the shade to 10 drops of water. And I'm just kind of mixing it around. And when I put it up onto the, uh, the wall of it, it kind of gives you an idea of how, uh, how opaque it is or how translucent it is. And I really like that step. So now, again, we're just going to go over the entire miniature from head to toe with this wash. I'm not kind of uh, trying to avoid any certain areas. It's just, I'm doing it all. Then after that is done, we're gonna check to see where the, the wash is pulling and we're going to clean it up if we have to by adding just a, a you know, cleaning our brush off, or damp brush, specifically damp, and then it's just going over the wash where it's pulling and it'll just suck it up into the paintbrush where we whoop, where we don't want to just pop them off. And you can see it's a little bit of a mess here. You can see my fingers starting to get all full of the wash and that. A little bit extra wash underneath his arms, underneath his legs, behind his legs. You know, just where it would be more of a shadow going on. So there we go. Just like that. Pretty easy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Throwing it down. Make sure we got it everywhere. All right. So now since that is done, I'm just going to keep rolling here because the next thing we're doing is we're going to tackle the base. I'm just shaking up the known oil. You can see right there. It's another little shade or wash. Some people like to call it. Just give it a shake. Open it up. And again, I'm going directly out of the pot. I'm not mixing it 50-50 or any kind of ratio. And where I'm putting this is going to be on all of the metal and the asphalt. And I'm kind of overloading it just a little bit. You can see, because I want this concrete to be dirty. It, it can't be a clean concrete. Well, it could be if you want. But again, from where I like things being dirty, miniatures and everything, then this is what I'm doing. Just like that. So you can see how this looks. Pull it up this way. So you can see now, I'm just gonna clean my brush off. It's still damp and you can see under his arm there, it's kind of pulling too much that I, for my taste. So I'm just gonna wipe it off a little bit. Same with around here. You know, just certain areas that I think I should probably take some of the shade off. Yeah. I, I want it to be shadowy for sure in the spots but I don't want it to be blobby, if that is going to make any sense. So I'm just looking around to see where all the, see you can see in the back here, you can see where all of the shade is building up. So you know, I just take it from one and then just put it on the other to make him look like he's been in a battle or he's still in the battle and his, you know, he don't have this pristine costume on, superhero costume on, because he's in it. He's in it and he's fighting all of these bad guys and oh yeah, yeah. So we'll be back after this is all dry so we can do our final touch-ups and we'll see his final result. Now that all the wash this is almost completely dry, it's dry on Cyclops, but the base has a little bit of pooling, but that's fine. We can still carry on with this, but he is done. Like you can see, it did make him dirty in spots that he's just all filthy and that's what I like because I don't want him to be super clean you know anyhow so the next thing is we're going to do the base and we're just going to dry brush the base and then paint the rim black and we're going to call it done but to do that uh I'm going to take some screaming skull and whoops this was not even there so there we go screaming skull and Dawnstone. And the mix ratio of this is probably like uh, two Screaming Skull to one Dawnstone. You mix it up and you'll kind of get this kind of color. It's kind of like a, a greenish gray, I guess is the best thing. It's the best way to call it. And we're just going to dry brush it. You know, you put some onto your brush like that. And then you wipe off the excess onto a cloth or paper towel or something as much as you want and then all I'm doing is I'm going to go around the edges mostly just to try to pop that out a little bit more you can see right there 
And all this is doing is just giving it a little bit more of the asphalt texture. You can see here, you can see the big puddle that's kind of underneath that block there. Good oil spot, so happy accidents. I'm leaving it just like that because I'm happy that with happy accidents like that. Like if it's a motor, that's the oil that's been leaked out. So yeah, just a little more dry brush here. Uh, you know, trying to avoid as much as you can of the feet. You can always go in and fix them if you need to. So you can see, hear me dry brush. So yeah, I really like the look that this turned out to be for the asphalt or the concrete, whatever you want to call it, the sidewalk, you name it. But that is really nice. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint it the, uh, the rim black. And when that's done, we'll have a final shot of the miniature complete at 100% and ready to game on. And on top of that, I just want to uh, remind everybody, if you didn't subscribe already, I don't know why, because the channel's awesome. Don't forget the like button to like the video. Click the subscribe bell notification to get notified when other videos like this is popped up. So let me do the black rim and we'll be for the last shot. And in the last shot, I'm just going to put on the screen the paints that we use to get Cyclops done like so. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to keep up to date with Board Game Maniacs, click on the like and subscribe button to be notified when more videos come available. If you want to become an official sponsor of Board Game Maniacs, go to patreon.com slash boardgamemaniacs or you can go to streamlabs.com slash boardgamemaniacs1. That's right, and you can donate to help keep the lights on, keep food in our bellies, and play more games. We'll purchase more games, more equipment to make Board Game Maniacs evolve and get bigger and larger because of you, the viewers. I thank you from the bottom of my toes to the top of my head for all of your support. And until next time, Board Game Maniacs, be a maniac.